Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone. I would like to call this meeting to order. Welcome everyone to this public meeting of the Peel District School Board. And as you are able, please stand with us for the land acknowledgement and our national anthem. We would like to acknowledge that we are here today on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Nous tenons à reconnaître que nous sommes sur le territoire traditionnel des Mississaugas de la Première Nation de Credit. of you who don't think I look like Chair Cameron, you're right. Uh, Chair Cameron ha has sent his regrets tonight. And we have amendments to tonight's agenda. Under 7.1, we have a late request to delegate. Uh, and I believe you have um, the name uh, of the delegation uh, at your place. So if there are no other changes to the agenda, Trustee Davies, will you move the agenda as amended? Thank you. Trustee Andrews, will you second? No. Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Moving to item two, declaration of conflict of interest. Seeing none. Item three, minutes. Here for approval. Uh, I'll take them all together. 3.1 Special Education Advisory Committee, June 18th, 2019. 3.2 Physical Planning and Building Committee, September 4th, 2019. 3.3 Regular Meeting of the Board, September 9th, 2019. Trustee Marchant, will you put those on the board? Thank you very much. Trustee Kay McDonald, will you second? Thank you. Any questions or comments on any of those? Ah, there you are. What, for, is this for written questions? No. no. Any questions or comments on the minutes? Thank you. See, then if none, all those in favor? Thank you. Item four, chair's request for written questions from trustees. Trustee DeCrew? Thank you. Uh, I have Sir. Question about Sorry, it's not going on yet. There. Hello. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have two um, written questions, actually. Uh, one of them is about uh, the community permit increase um, in fees, um, rental fees. Um, how much will how much will the total revenue generated with the new rates be? Uh, how much will is the ministry's uh, grant, and how much is the total cost of operating these spaces? And then I have a second question, um, and that is, what is the feasibility of com composting at the Peel District School Board schools and work sites? And do any other school boards currently compost? Thank you. And you'll give a copy of that to our executive assistant. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Sohi. 
Thank you to you, Chair. Um, in order to be in better inform a possible motion to explore overdose prevention and stocking of naloxone kits in our schools, I respectfully ask the staff um, that they conduct a jurisdiction scan of other local and provincial school boards to see the best practice, examine policy and health and safety concerns that may arise from such a policy, uh, determine training, baselines, and costing on go-forward basis should such a program be instituted. Uh, prepare other information or material that they may determine to uh, pertinent to such a discussion. Thank you, and I will forward discussion to Donna. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll go to item five, notices of motion and petitions. Seeing none. Item six, special section for receipt. 6.1, retirements here for receipt. Trustee B. McDonald, will you put those on the floor? Thank you. Trustee Benjamin, will you second? Sure. Thank you. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. And I'll take 6.2 and 6.3 together. 6.2, Peel Principals and Vice Principals Day, October 2nd, 2019. And 6.3, Teachers Recognition Day in Peel, October 4th, 2019. Trustee Crocker, can I ask you to put those on the floor? Thank you. Trustee DeCru, will you second? Thank you. Does anyone want to speak to either of these items? Trustee Green. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, uh, I know uh, the information is here uh, to recognize uh, our uh, principal and vice principal um, October, for October 2nd. And I just wanted to basically echo and uh, say, you know, to our vice principal and principal, you know, how much we do appreciate the work that they do in school day in and day out and the impact that they are having on our children's life. I think uh, it, it's, it, it's very important that we actually recognize the work that they're doing because they're the leaders in the school that set the tone for the school and therefore uh, we need to um, honor them on this day. And definitely um, uh, Teachers Recognition Day, which is uh, October 4th, again, like to echo out to them, you know, especially we have some teachers in our school that go beyond the call of duty to ensure that our students' um, needs are being met and they're preparing uh, for the next journey in their education life. Uh, so uh, I want to really um, echo to all these te the teacher of the Peel District School Board, but especially to those who always go beyond the call of duty. Um, they stay around, they do extracurricular activity, they take their own time to support students, and uh, they're always there when the students are in need, that the student can always call on them, and they're always answer to those calls. So. Um, I want to say thank you for all that you do to ensure that our students are prepared and learning. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Green. Does anyone else have any comment? And I think Trustee Green probably has said it all. Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Carried. Item seven, our delegations. So tonight we have a delegation from I'm hoping that I'll pronounce your name correctly, sir. Baljinder Rakva. If you could come to the podium. And I believe you have uh, someone else with you. I do. Uh, we have one of our athletes who's here, and you did pronounce my name correctly. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is Baljinder Rakva, and I'm with the Canadian Field Hockey and Cultural Club. We're an organization that's been in Mississauga for the last, <coughs> excuse me, for the last 10 years. We run a youth program. Our athletes start at eight and they go up to 18 and then we move them into a seniors program. Bill Breed is one of our athletes who started as an eight-year-old and has been playing with us for the last how many years? 10 years. Ten years. He's on the Canadian team, just came back from a national tour of England and Europe, represented the Canadian junior team. Our goal is to get him and Ganga Singh, the other gentleman sitting there who was on the tour as well, to the 2024 Olympics and the 2028 Olympics. These are two athletes on our club who are being recognized for their excellence in field hockey. 
wasn't an easy task getting boys out to come and play field hockey. Uh, it's one of those sports that sort of resonates well with parents, South Asian parents, because they understand the sport, they see the sport. We have about 28 of them here today who are quite concerned about what's going to happen with our indoor <coughs> program. Our indoor program we've been running for the last few years at a Lincoln Alexander Public School. We rent the gym on a Saturday and Sunday. We rent all the gyms on a Saturday and Sunday. In fact, we spend about six, six and a half thousand dollars doing that. Not money is generated through our membership with our parents. We're a not-for-profit organization. We have about 80 boys and girls who play. And as I said, they start at eight and they go up to 18, 19, 20. Uh, over the years, we've had boys who've been on the Canadian team, on the Junior World Cup team, the Youth Olympics, the European Tour, the Junior Pan Ams. They all started out as eight, nine, 10 year olds with our club. We have girls, four girls on the Canadian Junior team this year. We have 12 girls on the Ontario Junior team who played in the national championships. We have six girls who are playing university hockey or collegiate hockey across Canada. We have six students who, st we started the program at Lincoln Alexander because we had six students who went to that school and their parents wanted us to do something for those kids specifically to get them back into some sort of a weekend activity. So Lincoln Alexander has been our home and it's been unfortunately in the news as well. Uh, we've reached, we do our sort of recruiting from the South Asian community, but we're not a South Asian club. We have a diverse group of people who play for us. Majority are South Asian. Majority are boys. We're trying to bring in more girls. Um, we also work very closely with the Malton Community Center across the street from Lincoln Alexander, where we do presentations. We hold seminars. We do training camps. We try to bring in kids from the community into the school on the weekend. We provide them with equipment, balls, sticks, shin pads and they need to bring their running shoes and a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. Um, we think we have a cultural responsibility to develop good citizens. This little hiccup that we're here for today has gone from us providing or coming up at about $6,000, $6,500 a year to having to come up at $21,000 and some change every year, which is prohibitive for us. We just won't be able to support that. Our program, We'll probably survive. We'll probably go from about 80 players to about 15 or 18. Parents will move their kids out of our field hockey program and find something else, something more affordable. Our coaches are volunteers. They all go through a training process. There's an Olympic coach who coaches our older boys. The three other, four other coaches who coach different age groups. We train our athletes to be umpires as well. We train them to be coaching. We put them through coaching programs. Um, that all will stop. You know, the notice of increase was somewhat of a surprise to us. Not a surprise, a shock. And we've heard different things about it. It's the province who's delegating it down to the board, the board trying to find resources to accomplish that. We're caught in the middle. $21,500 a year for us will kill our program. Not only our program, but I'm sure other community programs as well. There have been five organizations that we've been in touch with, cultural organizations, not-for-profit organizations, who've told us that they just can't afford to pay their fees. Now, they aren't going to pay $21,000. There's a few thousand dollars. But it's just prohibitive that they can't do it. So they've already pitched out of it. What that leaves the board with is if we're not using that school, the six, dollars $7,000 you collect from us disappears. We'll go somewhere else, we'll find other resources. Your costs don't change. You still have caretakers, you still have the facility, you have a gym. Develop a community use. I'm pretty sure every Board of Education has that as their mandate. So you're just basically, this increase is going to push that community use out of your community. We'll go elsewhere. Downtown Toronto, maybe. Community centers, maybe. Maybe we just stop our indoor program and concentrate on the outdoor program, which will be a huge impact on our club. At the end of the day, the board is still going to lose $6,000. You're not going to recoup that money from another organization that's going to pay $21,000, $22,000.
What we're asking you is to find a way, which is extremely difficult, but find a way where we're not bearing the brunt of, Mr. Re of provincial government downloading to you guys, municipalities downloading to you guys, and you guys trying to find a solution. We're just caught at the back end of all of this, and that's going to kill our program. One of the things we do, aside from field hockey, we run programs and we bring in specialists every year who talk about nutrition, who talk about anti-tobacco campaigns, we talk about drug awareness and drug use and how to prevent that in our community, and that's why these parents are here today. And that's why they commit their kids to coming out and hitting a ball around for three, four hours on a weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Um, you know, we got our notice in May saying there's going to be an increase. I think it was the end of June we got a notice saying it was going to be $21,000. Our AGM happens in the summer. Our parents were told how much it's going to cost them to run the program for a year. We're caught in the squeeze. We just can't afford it. We just won't be able to operate. And what you're really going to, what you're really going to see is kids like Bill Breathe and Gunga They'll still be in the program because they've hit a certain peak and they're not going to go out. There'll be a half a dozen of those guys still around and girls. But you won't see any more eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, ten-year-olds, ten years down the road. And we've worked really, really hard for the last ten years. As I said, our organization is all volunteers. We don't make a penny. We don't charge our parents to pay for coaches, managers, umpires. We, in fact, end up spending a lot more money out of our pockets taking our kids to tournaments in Ottawa and Vancouver and Calgary because that's where they need to be to showcase themselves so the guys in Vancouver and the national program recognize them. You know, if I, if I, if I may, I'm going to allow Bill Preet to just talk to you for about a minute about his experience. That's okay? Hi, my name is uh, Bill Preet Chima. I've been... Uh, I've started playing hockey around 8, 10 years old, as uh, my coach here has uh, told you guys before. And uh, it's been a great experience to play with uh, the club and uh, learn as an, an athlete, as a field hockey player, as well as a person. I feel like field hockey has given me many opportunities in my life, um, not just to travel and to play hockey, but to become a better person. Um, through going on these tours with the national program, which I've been able to do so because I've been playing with the club, learned, and have been recognized by a team by Canada. Um, I've been able, I've you know, you live all alone in like uh, with the team, and uh, that's, that's a whole other experience of you know, learn to be more independent. And I feel like it's a very important lesson, um, and I have a lot of goals for myself. Um, you know, I've, I'm currently just on the Canadian junior team, and I have goals to play for the Canadian senior team. The Canadian program for field hockey is originated in Vancouver and for me to compete with the kids in Vancouver because I am in Ontario it's very difficult. I, I'm relying on these um, facilities, uh, the Peel Boards gyms uh, to be able to practice, uh, to, to be able to grow as an athlete and you know uh, stay on par with the Vancouver athletes and uh, if uh, the club is unable to support these new price changes for rent um, I don't. If I, I am gonna stick with the, the club, and we, we are gonna see how, well, how where else we can go, but it's just gonna become a lot harder for me to, you know, play and grow as an athlete. And I feel like it's gonna affect a whole lot of other athletes who aren't here today. And uh, I would like to talk on their behalf, just so um, you guys are aware that you know it's not affecting just the club, and it's affecting a lot of the kids that are in Ontario that, uh, that are aspiring to be not just field hockey players, but gyms are used for many other sports, but. Um, I was here, uh, I wanted to come out of my day uh, to talk about this. Um, back over to Coach. I heard the, the ding go off, I guess that's my time. Just in, in, in conclusion, oh, it wasn't that? Okay, just in closing, oh, okay. You know, in, in closing, we're, we're just, you know, we just feel that we're caught at the back end of all of this. And you know, our question is, how do we get out of it? You know, how are these costs transferred on to the backs of their parents, and why, and how did this initiative happen? You know, your our provincial counterparts are telling us that they fund public schools and fully. The politics is the politics, and I get it. 
we're hearing there's a shortfall at Peel. And the money has to come from somewhere. Somewhere there is a disconnect. We just want to know where that is. So if the province is not sending enough money, then I think we should be at the province's table asking them why are they doing that? Or why aren't they delivering what they are said they're doing? And if it's at this area, then we should be asking the same questions of you. You know, we can absorb a certain amount. We can't absorb a 350% increase. And I, I, you know, this is, we'll just fold. And unfortunately, we'll have to go back to the community and say, we're going to have to find gyms elsewhere. And as it is, you know, there may be more gyms available if there is a 350% increase gym time available, but we just won't be able to afford it. You know, you have a hard task, but that task is being burdened upon us. I just wish we weren't here today to talk about this. We have a practice going on right now, and we're here talking about gym rentals for the fall so that we can continue our programs. And if it stays the way it is, we just won't be able to. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Rackham. Could you stay at the podium, gentlemen, please, in case we have questions of clarification from the trustees? Uh, we very much appreciate your delegation, and uh, it is a hot topic, for I sure. Imagine. On that side and on this side. So we do appreciate your information that you've given us. Um, I'm not sure, does anyone have any uh, questions of clarification? You're only speaking once and one question of clarification, right? Is that, am I right, Trustee Green? Yes. Thank you. There you go. Thank you, Trudy Chair. Uh, thank you for bringing the delegation. I know uh, it is so important for our youth to be in these programs uh, and be busy. And with your organization, I know you from a while, and representing Canada and bringing the support that we cannot offer at in our schools, uh, field hockey, and bringing these uh, young uh, Canadians to that level that they are representing Canada. Thank you so much. And yes, it is a hard time, and it is a hard topic. And my question is, um, is there any funding available at any other levels of uh, government that uh, they give for to support? No, not at the club level. So our club dues go to the Ontario Field Hockey Association, a portion of it goes there, and then a portion of that goes to the national program for the Canadian Field Hockey Association, which we're all members in good standing with. You have to be. Uh, so the funding, there is no funding model for grassroots uh, for field hockey. There are some uh, Canadian tire funding for ice hockey, there's some for basketball through the Raptors Foundation but nothing for boys or girls field hockey. In fact, there's nothing for boys field hockey, and I don't know if any programs for girls field hockey. So everything is sort of parent-driven. We do a lot of fundraisers. We sell samosas often to raise money. We do uh, banquets. We do T-shirt sales. In fact, we do T-shirt sales to support the Canadian program, the Canadian team that's going to the Olympics we raised about $3,000 selling Team Canada shirts for them so they, their players can go to the Olympics next year in Tokyo. Sad commentary. I'm sorry, one of the things you mentioned was, you know, the outreach. We also go to Peel schools and speak to the phys ed teachers and offer to coach the girls in the fall with, one of our, with a number of our student athletes. So students who are actually in that program, we develop a guideline for them and say, one of our student athletes will come and coach your girls team if you need help. So we do that outreach and it's twofold. One, we want the kids to be playing. And secondly, once the girls season is done, we want to incorporate them into our program and hopefully have them continue through the indoor and outdoor. So there's a selfish reason for us to do that as well. But that's part of our goal to develop these athletes. Much harder getting boys to come out. We sort of pick out boys who you know, are nine, 10 years old who can run, and then we sort of mold them into field hockey players and athletes who can go do something else. 
Thank you. Thank oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much. Trustee De Krug. Thank you for coming today. Um, I really appreciate that. You said that um, you've had some conversations with the um, provincial government. They've told you that they fund public schools fully and that we are deciding to just make this decision Sorry, arbitrarily? This, no, they said it was a community programs that they still fund fully and haven't changed your model. That's what we're hearing from mm -hmm. them. We have heard their changes to funding, mm -hmm. but not to the community programs. Okay. Now, I'm not aware of what that program is. Yeah, so I, I think it would be helpful to hear a little bit from administration about, and, and perhaps that would be in the response, or um, about what the community use of school funds wa fund is mm -hmm. and how much it is, and, and that's partly why I've actually been working closely with, with the trustee uh, Sohi um, on this, because my community is uh, heavily impacted as well, and we've met with a number of different organizations mm -hmm. who have been impacted, so I just want to assure you that we're very, very, very concerned, and we're the community use of schools is very, very important to us. I know in my wards it is, and we're really thinking very hard on how we could do this and how we can help. Um, but it just would be very, one of the things that, um, and this, I know I'm going off a little bit. And Clarification. I, I am not asking, I'm so sorry. But one, I guess one of the, re, the questions I, I wanted to know is what the government is saying, because I'd like to understand their understanding of what had transpired here. Right. So, uh, you know, the MPP that we spoke to said the funding hasn't changed for community-based... Community use of school funds. Exactly. That has stayed calm. There were no cutbacks there. Okay. So they're saying to us... Okay. We're not sure why you have to pay more. You're, uh, I, we haven't heard from anyone here why we're going to be paying more. Okay. But I imagine it's because of cutbacks in funding, et cetera, and that's yeah. why the, it's gone up 350%, for us anyway. Yeah. Uh, you know, we can, if it was would a cost of living, 5%, 8%, or 10%, which would still be quite extravagant, I think mm -hmm. we could absorb that, we could do internal fundraising, we could raise our membership dues a little bit to accommodate that, but to go from what we're currently collecting to and, 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 and to be honest, the parents that we have, some are quite well-to-do mm -hmm. and some not so well-to-do. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the idea is to get their kids into programs that are organized, that are safe, that are supported with coaches and umpires and administrators and are run properly. Yeah. You know, we could always just throw a ball out on a field and say, go chase it. but. You know, we try to run it a little bit better, and that's why we're part of the Ontario Field Hockey Association and the Canadian Field Hockey Association. And um, in your in the schools that you do operate, mm -hmm. or the programs that you operate, are there any other permit holders in the school at the same time? Uh, not at the same time when we're there, because we take all three gyms. Okay. At, but at what Lincoln about Alexander, like But before us, there are. There's a youth basketball program that okay. comes down, uh, and they have smaller numbers and there's a dance group that comes down as well earlier than we do but during our time slots we're the only ones who use the gym okay okay so Thank you know if and after us there's no one who uses the gym that i'm aware of mm -hmm. so if we're not there you've got three empty gyms but you only use the gyms we only you use, don't the, use gyms. the classrooms we don't use the classrooms it's only the gyms okay uh, we have access to the the change rooms, but not the showers. I'm not sure why, but that's just the way it's been, and we've never argued that. Mm -hmm. uh, that you know, works. we have a caretaker who opens the doors and closes them for us, and I'm sure he cleans up afterwards. We, but we make it a point to get our athletes to put everything back the mm -hmm. way it was before we got there, mm -hmm. and we do a, a walkabout before we start practice to make sure there's no debris or loose change or marbles on the floor sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and each athlete has that responsibility and before we start our practice. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, our use of the gym is just the gym. Just the gym. Storage of our clo winter clothes and boots in the, in, in the dressing room. Nobody showers there because the showers mm -hmm. are never on. Okay, thank you. Thank you, I have other speakers. Uh, student trustee Aurora. Thank you. 
Through you, Chair, I would just like to firstly thank you guys for coming here and presenting this delegation. As a youth within the Peel community, I can absolutely understand the importance of such initiatives and programs, so I commend you for organizing these programs. I, would, I am just a bit curious about how much the cost has increased for individual families. I know that for yourselves, it's increased um, 350 times more, but for individual parents and families, how much has your fees to join your program increased? Over the years, or it's been, it's been constant. Um, okay, just so it's, these... we, we collect $150 okay. for the outdoor season and $250 for the indoor season. Okay, and so, after these facility rentals, have those fees increased for the families? Well, we haven't passed those on to the families yet. We're not sure we'll be able to. Okay. Uh, so, you know, going from $500, it'll probably come out to $1,500, $1,800 to register an eight, nine year old kid in a program that in a field hockey program. And I, and I, you know, as it is, we have parents who we compensate for will defer their payments. If they have more than one child in the program, we have a subsidy for them. If they're parents who can't afford it, we don't question it. We work very much in an honor system. And if they say it's a tough year, then we accept it. And hopefully when better years come along, they'll give back a little. So we don't kick anyone out because they can't afford 150 or $250. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Trustee B. McDonald? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you for taking the time to come here and present uh, your case very well. So I heard you in your presentation and heard in conversation also with Trustee DeCroup uh, that you said you're willing to pay more. I'm going to ask you, what would you be willing to pay more? And, and I'll preface it. 8% wouldn't be the right number, but no. where would you be able to? You know, right now we're paying about $6,200 a year. Right. If we went up to $10,000, I think we could find $4,000, which is a, almost mm -hmm. a, you know, if it meant a 100% increase, we could probably push that and aim mm -hmm. for that. Uh, you know, maybe some hardships on us, but we're right. willing to bear that. Uh, pushing at 350%, mm -hmm. as I said, there'll be some who'll still continue because their kids are 14, 15, 16 yep. and show lots of promise. Okay. But those eight, nine, 10 year olds, I'm afraid will go elsewhere. Yeah, okay. That's so, good. you know, we're not coming here to say, you know, we're not willing to pony up a little bit more, but it's within, uh, within reason. Oh, I appreciate that. I hope that helps. No, it does very much so. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Benjamin. To you, Chair. Thank you, Baljinder, for coming here. Welcome. That's my award, and I greatly appreciate the work, work that you are doing as a community. And I also understand the love for field hockey that we have, being South Asian myself. My question to you is, as soon as you got this information about the increase in rentals, uh, did you make any uh, attempt to contact other uh, say maybe school boards or other areas if you want to you know find other space which would be not so expensive we did we went to community centers uh, very restrictive as to allowing us to play indoors just because they have glass on certain walls so those were out of the question uh, we did go to Humber College and they were willing to accept us but there it became almost a a matter of trans, you know, going. Most of our families live in and around uh, Lincoln Alexander, and it's about a 15-20 minute drive. Humber College would be substantially longer. We do have facility availability to us at UFT downtown, which is prohibitive, even more expensive than what we're currently paying, and all sorts of other things come in: parking, getting our kids down there, getting the parents down there, uh, which again was out of the question. So we, you know, those, and there aren't a lot of areas we can explore. Uh, there is, we're, we're trying to have conversations with the Catholic school board, but so far without much luck. Uh, you know, they, they keep sending us to the permit department. The permit department says, we'll get back to you. So that's the other option we're exploring in Peel. We're not sure how successful we'll be there. Thank you, and I hope you continue to work with us, but I would just like to assure you that we just had a very uh, long and lengthy discussion about this. This is very much on our minds. And also, I have uh, uh, you know, talked to the associate director. And I would like to assure you that we are having a 
meeting with the MPP very soon, and hopefully we would be able to help you continue with this wonderful program. That Thank would be you. wonderful. I think our Thank parents you. and our athletes would be much relieved to hear that, that there is some sort of solution other than a cost increase for us. Thank you. Trustee Marshall. Yes, uh, thank you, sir, um, again for your delegation. Just to, to clarify, the total number of kids you've serviced this year or on your? This year, eight, approximately 80. 80 kids? Yeah. And out of the 80, there are probably 50 boys and about 30 girls. And it sort of it goes up and down by five or 10. They, they, they come on board, they'll play for a few months, and then another sport either comes on board or they just don't want to do it anymore. Parents move, that sort of stuff. Thank you. And mostly in the Malton area? Nearly all of them in the Malton area. Malton, Mississauga, a couple of South Brampton. It's okay. We don't mind a couple from Toronto. Kids, kids <laughs> not, kids, from, yeah. not from Toronto. They don't yeah, come yeah, out this they're, far. They're, they're all our children, right? They're all your children. Um, question. That's, that, that, I think, is past an answer. Thank you. That's all I needed. Any other questions of clarification for our guests? Seeing no more, um, we would ask uh, for notes uh, from your presentation. I'll send if, them tomorrow. Thank you, that'd be great, because that's the way uh, we can answer you. Uh, Perfect. Um, and um, you will receive a written response. This will go to staff, uh, and you'll receive a written response uh, on or before our next meeting, which is October 10th. Okay, you're welcome to attend that meeting. And I thank you very much and congratulate all of your athletes. Thank you. We'll pass, them, pass it all on to them. Have thank a good night, you. all. Thank you. We move on to item 8, old business. 8.1 is a response to the delegation regarding the increase of facility rental fees from our last meeting. Trustee Sohi, will you put this on this floor for receipt? Uh, Trustee, oh, thank you. Trustee B. McDonald will put it on the floor. Trustee Green, will you second? Thank you. All those in favor? Carried, thank you. Item nine, new business. 9.1, recommendations of the Special Education Advisory Committee are here for approval. Trustee Marchant. On the floor, Trustee K. McDonald, were you second? Thank you. Questions or comments on those? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Item 10, reports from officials and staff. We have 10.1 in your agenda. The appointment of community representatives to the Supervised Alternative Learning, commonly known as SAL Committee, for the 2019-2020 school year. Uh, you'll see the names listed in your agenda. And we'd like to thank them all for volunteering their time in support of our students. <coughs> Trustee Crocker, will you put the, this on the floor? Thank you. Trustee Green, will you second? Yes. Thank uh, you. And a, questions or? There's a correction. There's a, like one yep, please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, um, Joyce Temple Smith yes. uh, should say the retired executive director of the Malton Neighborhood Service. She, uh, so if we could have that corrected. Absolutely. Because that could cause some confusion because Jackie Lewis is the executive director for Malton Neighborhood Services. Okay, great. Okay. We'll just make sure that, that you've got that, that change. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions or comments? All in favor? Thank you. We're carried. 10.2 is our September enrollment report. And Controller Wright, you're going to speak to that for us? Thank you, Madam Chair. Just three brief comments with reference to the September enrollment report. The September end of first week of September Elementary enrollment was 114,957 students. This, that, the September 2019 elementary enrollment I'm reporting tonight is 41 students lower than was stated in the oral report September 9th. 
It was discovered within a few hours of reporting that that one of our schools had counted a class twice. So again, that number is uh, corrected and is in fact 41 less than the oral report. End of first week of September, secondary enrollment was 41,426 for a total combined growth, elementary and secondary, September 2018 to 19 of 441 students for a total of 156,383 kindergarten through grade 12 students effective end of first week, September 2019. Thank you. Thank you, Controller Ritt. Trustee Andrews, can I ask you to put that on the floor? Sure. Trustee Davies, will you second? Thank you. Do we have any questions or comments? Mm, Trustee Crock? No? Okay, all those in favor? Thank you. Thank you for the report. 10.3, a transportation update, and we do have a handout, I think it was at your place to go along with the oral report. And controller Sung, this is, no, I haven't got anything there. I can't do anything. To, can you push the button? There we go. Thank you. Through you, Chair, through you, Chair Lawton. Uh, I'm very pleased this evening to have uh, Wendy Dobson here from Stopar, and she'll be pre presenting a short uh, presentation on startup and what's happening with Stopar right now. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Through you, Madam Chair. Um, student transportation of uh, Peel Region is. Um, transports approximately 68,000 students daily, making us the largest transportation operation in Canada. We have over 1,500 school bus routes and we transport 20,590 students for Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board and 47,422 students for the Peel District School Board. We wanted to give you a few stats on, on how things have progressed uh, compared to previous years. Uh, for the week of August 26th to 30th, Stopar received 2,152 calls. Uh, for the first week of school, September 3rd to September 6th, Stopar received 2,390 calls. Um, this is just to give you a little perspective on the volume of changes and um, questions and requests that we receive uh, within that two-week period. All school bus operators have a driver behind every route. I know that this has been a struggle in the past, um, but we do have uh, a driver for every single route that, it, that we service, and we also have spares with every one of our school bus operators to uh, assist with any book-offs of school bus drivers. Wanted to just show you just briefly about the delays that, that are posted on our, on our website. Um, we have spent a great deal of time um, with the school bus operators in, in the Peel region um, to deal with some accountability and making sure that they're posting not only um, uh, the timely delays, but making sure they're posting every delay. Um, so we just wanted to show you a report of the delays that have been posted in the first two weeks of school, um, showing you that a majority of our delays are a 10 minute delay. Uh, we didn't have significant delays as previous years in the 60 to 90 minute factor. Um, but I would like to note that the 410 was closed twice um, during the first two weeks of schools, and that does uh, have a tremendous impact on our delays for our school buses. Stop our moving into the 1920 uh, school year has developed a, st a, st a strategic plan focusing on three areas, operations, communications, and administration. The reason we're focusing on these areas is to uh, continue to improve on customer service and efficiency. As I had mentioned earlier, one of our focuses with the operators is accountability. 
making sure that our school bus operators are complying to the contract that we have signed with them. Um, we did put some penalties into place uh, because of last year's uh, performance issues that we had. Um, Stopper is also going to be focusing on road efficiencies, uh, looking at optimizing all of our school bus routes for the next school year. And we are also going to be working on our student data flow that we receive from both uh, Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board and Peel, Differ Peel District School Board, making sure that we receive that data in a timely manner. Student safety is also another focus for Stop Bar. Stop Bar will be implementing consistent processes in evaluating student safety at stops, incidents that occur on buses, collisions, and more. We are pleased to announce that Stop Bar has uh, dabbled in social media, and we now have a Twitter account at Stop Bar Info. These tweets uh, are a push out only at this point in time, but the tweets will be related to safety messaging, reminders, inclement weather cancellations, driver appreci appreciation day, and any Stop Our updates. Stop Our will also be issuing two newsletters a year in order to improve on our communication to parents and schools. We also have a new website that will be coming in September 20, or sorry, in the summer of 2020. Our new website will be more interactive and will service and view in multiple languages. Under the administration portion, Stopar is working very hard to work on team building within our current environment, um, involving a, a vast project plan that's being developed. We are focusing on internal, internal professional development and a reorg of our department to focus on um, streamlining the, the duties and structure and, and addressing customer service communications as well. Other additional things on our strategic plan and some highlights are courtesy transportation, um, how we can pro possibly improve the process of our courtesy transportation, uh, the current process. Uh, internal key performance indicators so that we can gauge how we are doing, uh, not just stop our, but our school bus operators as well as part of their service contract. Developing transportation handbooks for our school administration and call center support and ticketing system. Some of the idea or some of the questions that we receive from, um, from administrators and um, even from trustees are timelines for routes to be finalized for startups. So I just wanted to give you a quick little overview that our routes go out to the school bus operators the Friday before civic holiday every single year. At that time, the operators do a quality check on those routes. They go out, they dry run them, see if there's any construction. But we have to keep in mind that the traffic in August is not the same as traffic in September. So with that being said, after they do the quality check, then the um, drivers sign up to pick their route. Once they pick their route, the drivers are required to physically go out with their bus and drive the school bus route before September startup. And that can occur from the time that they signed up to Labor Day weekend so that they can become familiar with it. Uh, another question that tends to come up is what is the process when adding or modifying a route? So when we receive a change that comes in. Stop R has a change process and timelines that we have to meet. We get a number of changes that come in, especially the last week of August and the first couple of weeks of September, and we have certain dates. So we give ourselves three days to make changes simply due to the volume and ensuring that we get them to the school bus operators in time for the changes to be effective. The last thing is how to stop our deal with calls. Is there a priority, depending on the urgency, we have a direct line for all of our schools to reach stop bar, okay? Our general population comes into our system on, on the phone system and they go into a queue system. I am happy to, to speak to the fact that the first couple of days of school, we only had, we had probably about 15 people sitting in the queue. By the third day of school, we only had six people on the average sitting into the queue and by the, Friday, the last Friday, the first week of school, we were down to two or three people. The second week, there was zeros across the board. So it was a tremendous improvement from previous years. One of the hot topic items tends to be courtesy transportation and what is the current process for courtesy transportation? 
Because we spend a lot of time at Stop Bar dealing with changes, the last week of school, the first two weeks of school, uh, a number of changes are coming in and requests. Uh, we're assigning uh, eligible students to the bus. Um, we don't have the opportunity to look at courtesy and open up the courtesy data information until the last week of September. This gives us at Stop Bar an opportunity to make sure that we have all of our eligible students on the bus. We can then gauge how many seats are available. I think if we, if we put courtesy on uh, prior to that timeline, is we find that the students may go on for a week, but they may have to come off. It depends on the situation. So we'd like to make sure that we have all the students assigned before that happens. Once the portal opens for the schools to, to flag students for courtesy transportation, um, then Stop Bar, effective today actually, uh, Stop Bar has started beginning to assign their courtesy transportation. Uh, the other thing that Stop Bar is going to be working on is the data flow um, and looking to see if we can improve our data flow from the schools and the time, in a timely manner so that there is a possibility to back up the courtesy transportation because I know that is a lot of uh, phone calls that tend to come in to see if, if uh, families can get their student on courtesy a lot sooner. So that's one of the things that Stop Bar will be looking at over the next year. I believe that there was notification that was given to uh, both school boards about a school bus locator software that we did launch a pilot back in the spring and parents could log in with their student information and they could see where the bus was and uh, an ETA of when the bus would arrive at their stop. Um, unfortunately, the findings from the spring pilot did not yield um, the results we were looking for. There were some glitches in the, the software product. Um, so I just wanted to bring to your attention that Stop Art is working on next steps. And those next steps will be looking at other third party um, um, software providers that can possibly give our parents an app rather than them having to log in with their student information. Give them something that's easily accessible on the phone. So please stay tuned because there may be more information coming about that. At this point in time, I'll take any questions through you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. That's one of the most exciting reports I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we have several questions, several speakers. So I will start with uh, the first, uh, tr Trustee Marchin. Yes, thank you. Through you, Chair. Um, just going through some of the numbers. So. In your second slide, you talk about 1,500 school bus routes. And then in the fourth slide, we're talking about runs. Is a run one way of a route? Through you, Madam Chair. So there could be three or four runs on a route. Okay. So what is our total number of runs if I'm trying to... The... I actually don't have that number with me, but I could provide that information back to you. Thank, thank you. It's just that I, I know there's been rapid improvement but I, then I've got nothing to compare the numbers to, so thank you. Trustee B. McDonald. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, through you, Chair. First of all, thank you. Um, you know, the previous two years uh, have been very problematic. I think a lot of trustees experienced that, and this year you did a, a miraculous job in seeing your numbers that talk about that first week, obviously. Uh, you've done a great job working with all the operators and getting uh, them on board and, and doing all the roads. So I, I, I can't thank you enough for that. Uh, so my questions are around the ones I get are the courtesy busing, right? And, um, you know, you talked about, uh, you know, how, uh, the timelines, can we move that up? And, and now I'm seeing you're being so organized, you're only getting two calls by, you know, in queue on Friday. Do you think we can move uh, the timelines up? And, and the reason, and I've been talking about this for a long time because I live, or my, my community I represent is in the South Mississauga, so very uh, stable. You know, I don't think the routes change that much. Uh, declining enrollment. So there's not a lot of change going down in my area. So I would think my communities would be more uh, a change completed before a community is like opening up in the new, you know, north where there's whole new communities just opened up and have to figure that out and then people get, didn't register and they, you know, that must be an enormous problem and task. So 
in your evaluation of courtesy busing, and I don't need the answer today, but is it possible that, you know, maybe where things are more mature, more stable, that you can address that sooner for that community and then get on to the more changing communities before they settle down before you get on to them? Through you, Madam Chair. Um, it is my goal to at least get us a, a, little, a little closer ahead in the month of September to, to be able to assign courtesy. I would like to highlight that the coordinators that look after the planning of the school bus routes, each of them look after 6,000 students from various areas. So although some communities are stable, and we, we completely understand that, it's their unstable area where they need to kind of get all that done before they can get to the next step. I really believe that the data flow, and if we can improve on that, will get us better positioned to back up the courtesy timelines. Okay, thank you very much. Trustee Crockett. Uh, thank you, Chair, and, and, and through you. I, I'd like to thank you for this report. It's definitely a good news report, and I, I confess to being one trustee who at this time last year uh, was quite cranky about the buses and I, I was cranky for some months as I, as I recall and I was particularly cranky about the fact that uh, some of the same schools that were badly affected last year um, had been badly affected the year before and um, you know we, we, we tend to get uh, a bit paranoid at that, at that point you know we wonder why me and, um, and why us on behalf of the community. So I, I'd like to acknowledge this work. I, I, I will say that I was very happy for a, a, a couple of days and then I got a strongly worded email from a parent at a school that uh, had had busing problems the last two years and the principal contacted me right away and I, and I went to see her and uh, I made a whole lot of notes and the first thing on my, my list to do was, was, to, uh, was to call uh, Controller Chung uh, which I did, and to con and also to contact the superintendent of schools, Dr. Solomon Henry, and uh, they both got back to me, I, I think, faster than the transmission uh, could, could have moved, and they, they promised immediate action, and I, um, I emailed the parent with the strongly worded email to say um, I, I trusted these people to, uh, to follow through on their promises, and by gum they did, and I want to acknowledge that, and, um, and, and something... <laughs> that doesn't happen every day happened that week. The, the parent wrote back to me to thank me. And, um, and I said, that, you know, thanks isn't, isn't due to me. It's, uh, it's due to the people at Stop R and it's, uh, and it's due to Controller Chung. So on behalf of the parents at Willow Way Public School, uh, thank you very much. Uh, finally, a, a comment not so much to our, our presenters, but uh, to um, se senior admin generally. I continue to be concerned about the situation in a school with a single administrator. Um, these tend, in, in my experience, certainly in my area, to be uh, junior elementary, you know, so they've got a high proportion of, uh, of, of really little kids, and in September some of them are still three. And, uh, and if the bus is late, and uh, if they're on a really long route, as in, in one case was, was true, um, they can be out of school for an extra hour or two at the end of the day, and, and that's too much. And, it, and it's too much for a school administrator who's, uh, who's answering the phone from, from upset parents and, and phoning the bus company and doing all the other things that they, they have to do. And Dr. Solomon Henry was very good about promising uh, uh, attendant help as, uh, as um, superintendents were in the past and, and providing money for, for snacks for the kids and, and, and all the rest. So, so that we can pull the trigger on uh, really quickly. Um, however, my concern still does persist about the assistance that we can give to uh, single administrator schools. So thank you, Chair. There's, there's no question there, but uh, I hope it was a worthwhile comment nonetheless. Thank you. Trustee Green. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, I just wanted to just commend um, the work that Wendy has done since came into Stopper as the Chair of Stopper. Um, as you know, I represent the board over there for the last, I think it's going, this is my eighth year over there, and uh, um, myself and the uh, Dufferin Catholic Board, we alternate the chair. So I, I actually end up chairing most, of, so this is about six years that I'm chairing um, that committee. And I have tell you that we have seen, uh, Wendy just gave you a little snapshot of the work she has done over there since coming in and uh, the improvement overall in the system, um, basically, 
And just to let you know that um, one of the things that I was really impressed with, she was, she was open. She was willing to listen to uh, the, uh, because I do take our concern when I go to those meetings. And I share them and she was willing to listen. And not only that she was willing to listen, she was willing to uh, dig deeper and then come back to us with answers. And uh, in, in not hitting anybody who may have retired and gone, but one of the differences that with Wendy, Wendy are holding the bus company accountable and they're getting hit hard when they don't live up to uh, the contract um, that they sign. So uh, because of that, um, what we are seeing is that the bus company now are realizing that they need to pull their socks up and they're doing due diligence and, and making sure they're living up to those contracts. So there's great change, I can say, um, great improvement, the entire system. and I, and. Uh, Wendy has a plan uh, going forward, a strategic plan, and even to do more work. And I, I tell you, um, when you see the plan that she has, I think it's, so things are only going to get better. So I, I want to commend her and her team, and uh, Controller uh, Chang and uh, Associate Director Gil uh, for the support. And um, I, I, I think uh, from what I've seen, I can say to my colleagues that we are in good hands and we're looking forward to great things happening um, for our transportation and the improvement for our students. Um, so again, Wendy, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Kay McDonald. Thank you. Through the chair, first I'd just like to thank you too, Wendy, because we, I would say it's a remarkable difference uh, compared to last year. However, I have a few questions. So my first one is, how do you know that the delays that are being reported are accurate? Because for example, at a particular bus stop, the um, schedule and the tags that the kids are getting, it says 4.05, but the bus driver um, are telling the parents, no, it's 4.17, because she just can't get there before that. So, how, so then when she is um, 40 minutes late, it might be registering as a 10 minute delay, or if she's an hour late, it might not be. So how do you know that the delays are in fact being accurate, be reported? Through you, Madam Chair. So we have GPS that's in the back end. Um, right now, uh, the, getting the operators to be accountable to post the delays is a work in progress. I know that we've seen an improvement and we are going to continue to improve on that. Um, with that being said, if we receive a call from a parent or from a school that states that the bus is only posted 10 minutes late, but it's actually 20 minutes late, we can actually go in and see the GPS in the back end and know exactly where that bus is and contact the bus company. Right now, it's not a seamless process. We're still having to hear from people in order to, to possibly gauge some of those delays. However, again, we are penalizing the operators for not posting their delays in a timely manner or posting the delays period. They are being penalized on a monthly basis. So we, are, we have their attention. It will get better. Um, I, I think that's what I can offer you right now, that we have seen an improvement and it will continue to get better. If families are still seeing an issue, by all means, Stopper is here to help. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Now, what about the notifications? Because um, when they are notifying parents, I'm getting complaints invariably that they will send a notification, it may be half an hour later, and they're saying they're 20 minutes late. And that is still happening on one particular route that I've gotten a complaint about. And I'm wondering if, because if a bus, I could understand if you have an accident or something, but if a bus is, say, 20 minutes or 30 minutes late to get into a school, they must know that they're going to be late. So in terms of the timeliness also of sending out a notification. Mm -hmm. So parents, especially in this particular case, you have elderly parents, uh, grandparents who are waiting for their little grandchildren. And to stand up there, it's quite a challenge for some people if they have to wait you know, half an hour or an hour for a bus. Sometimes it might be hot, winter is coming, it might be cold, it could be raining. So I'm just wondering in terms of the actual notification that goes out to parents too, how do you monitor that? Are you able to monitor that to make sure that it's being sent out? 
through you, Madam, through you, Madam Chair. Um, we do have the subscription service, which I think is what you're speaking about, mm -hmm. uh, where parents can subscribe yeah. to receive a delay. Um, and that subscription service speaks directly to the, to the delays that are posted on our bus planner website. Um, again, if, if, you, if you have parents in your community that are having concerns, you can have them call Wendy Dobson directly. I will be happy to speak with them. I will deal with the operator that's not posting them, um, but the parents can directly call in and ask to speak to me at this point in time, and we will get this rectified. It is going to take us time with 1,500 school bus routes on the road, with multiple runs attached to those routes. One run could be late, but the other two aren't. It is, um, it's a transitional period for us. The operators haven't been held accountable in the past for, for not posting their delays. So um, if you could bear with me, I promise you that you will see an improvement as the time goes on. Okay, thank you. Because I know one parent wanted to share that if she knows, like say the bus is gonna be 20 minutes late from leaving the school, it is better for her to pick up the kid because she has to go to her afternoon shift and switch with her husband. So even simple things like that too, is so important for families. And if a, a grandparent doesn't have to leave the house, you know, too early, it could delay how much time they have to actually stand outside. Through you, Madam Chair, I wonder if, if at all possible, it could be that there's an issue with the timing of the road as well, if it's consistently late. Okay. Um, so there's two issues. The one, one is it's not being posted properly, and the second issue is, is that there could be actually a timing issue with the route that stop our needs to address immediately. Okay, thank you for that. And, oh, with regards to the cost of the locator software, like how much does that cost? Because I was just wondering what happens, um, like how beneficial it is to bear a cost to have a locator software? Because what happens if there's an accident? That's always a big concern of mine. So if you have an accident and parents can see that the bus is in an accident and you suddenly you have 50 parents going to the scene of an accident. So we, we actually haven't in, explored just yet the, the cost of a third party locator. Okay. Once we do, that, that submission will be sent to the governance committee for, for review. Okay. Um, it won't show that there's an accident, it will just show that the bus has stopped. And that okay. could mean several things. It could mean the bus broke down, the bus is delayed at a previous school. It doesn't necessarily mean that the bus has been in any kind of incident of any kind. So um, I think before a locator or, or an app goes out, there's an education piece that we need to provide to the schools and the stakeholders that would be using it so okay. that they clearly understand what the use of the locator is for. Okay, thank you. And the last question is, if a bus breaks down or is in an accident and parents come there, let's say they're on Williams Parkway, I would imagine that the bus driver is not supposed to open the door and let the kids out. So how does that work? Through you, Madam Chair, uh, whenever there is a, a collision that occurs with a school bus, the police are called, mm -hmm. and it is up to the police officers to release the students, not the school okay. bus driver or school administration that may show up on site. It is the responsibility of Peel Regional Police to release any students to parents. Okay, perfect, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Sohi. Thank you. To the chair, um, thank you, Wendy, for the insight and uh, working to provide a wonderful experience, uh, the busing experience, I would say, for our Peel family. And uh, thank you for the dedication and commitment, uh, our control tongue, which we can actually see from his necktie today. So my question is actually um, about the courtesy seating. So is it based on first come, first serve, or need-based? or distance-based? How do you evaluate and how do you offer? Thank you. Through you, Madam Chair, courtesy transportation is administered through the schools. Okay, so Stop Our sets guidelines for the schools to use, mm -hmm. um, and it is based, um, the guidelines that we have sent out to the schools is based on distance and grade. Um, however, um, it is really up to the school administrators if they have other circumstances as far as assigning. Some may look at whether or not there's a sibling issue or a concern, uh, their community or families, um, but a guideline has been sent out from Stop Bar on how to assign courtesy transportation. Thank you. So this is up to the administration who they put it on. Thank you. Um, Trustee Benjamin. Through you, Chair, I was going to ask the same question uh, about courtesy busing. 
because uh, a parent approached me. They are new to the area where I live. It's just down the street where I live. A young couple with a kid who's just gone to kindergarten. And uh, they have an eight-month-old baby. So the distance for this child is just 0.98. So they say it's just 0.98, but when they walk to the bus stop, you know, which is, uh, it's almost a kilometer. So they don't have the busing. Uh, they are new immigrants. They do not speak the English well, and they have this kind of problem. So they approach me and ask what can be done. And I was told that about the courtesy busing, and then it'll be end of September by the time, you know, they get an answer. So my question to you is, uh, what are the chances for this family? Through you, Madam Chair, um, I, would, I, I honestly don't know because, it, again, it's the school administration that assigns the students. They, we let them know um, how many seats are available to their school on each of their individual routes that, that attend that school. So it really is up to the school administration on how they assign those courtesy seats. Okay. So Thank we you. do have transportation policy. Forty-nine, maybe is the policy number, uh, and it lays out um, thirty-nine courtesy bus. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. <clears throat> I'm ten years older than I look, too. I know. Thank you. Do we have any other questions or comments? Seeing none, thank you so much uh, for this presentation. It really uh, has made, oh, but I didn't put it on the floor. Trustee Crocker, will you put it on the floor for me? Sure. And Trustee Green, you'll second it? Thank you. And I will say again, uh, we really do thank you for the report. It uh, gives us uh, hope. Thank you so much. some difficulty. I expect um, Controller Sung is happy as well. Uh, so we go to item 12, reports from Ontario School Boards Association. All in favor, Madam Chair. Sorry? All in favor. Oh, I'm sorry. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Item 12, reports from Ontario School Boards Association. No, not seeing one. 12.1 um, is the Office by Connects, September 16th. Uh, Trustee Andrews, can you put that on the floor? Trustee Sohi, will you second? Yep, comments or questions on that? All those in favor? Carried. Uh, item 13, communications for action or receipts. Seeing none. Item 14, response of administration to former questions. Um, so we have 14.1, response to written questions submitted by Trustee DeCroob and Trustee K. McDonald at the September 9th, 2019 board meeting regarding the provision of menstrual products in schools. So Trustee DeCroop, can I have you put it on the floor? Trustee K. McDonald, do you second it? And do we have any questions or comments on the response? Trustee DeCroop. Thank you, I just wanted to thank um, Associate Director Herman. Yes, <laughs> got the right person. Um, for providing this information, and um, I'm, I'm quite satisfied with uh, with this information. Um, I just wanted to ensure that here in the report it says that um, students are made aware of the availability of these products to, through grade five health classes, um, and I think it's very important that we communicate that a little bit wider than that, especially since we do see exemptions for the health classes um, in some of our schools, and I just want to make sure that any, anyone who um, believes that they would need, um, uh, they would uh, benefit from this, would know that it's available. So just make sure that it's communicated to all students. It doesn't have to be a PA announcement or anything, but just, I don't know, something. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee K. McDonald? Thank you, Thierry Chair. I'd like to also, in addition to Associate Director Harmon, thank um, our Director of Communications, Direct, um, Director Pereira, um, for this report. It has answered my questions. Thank you. Thank you. So, all those in favor? Thank you. We're carried. 
14.2, response to a written question submitted by Trustee DeCrube at the September 9th, 2019 board meeting regarding current recycling practices. Uh, Trustee DeCrube, would you like to put that on the floor? Trustee Sohi, will you second it? Yep. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, you're faster it. than I okay. knew. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you, Madam Chair. And um, I do appreciate this uh, a lot. Um, I don't know why, but I always just assumed that wherever you go, everybody just recycles. It's just, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's, you know, the millennial in me or something. Um, but it's interesting because once I started thinking about this and, you know, just the answer coming back that it's 96%. Um, that we actually have 10 schools that don't recycle currently. Um, and I think, as the young folks would say, it's been a minute since uh, recycling has been a thing. So I think it's time for everyone to get on board with this. Um, so I do have a motion, if that's OK. It's a very simple one, nothing too fancy. But it just says, be it resolved that um, 100% appeal district school board schools and work sites recycle by the end of this current school year, which is a very, I think that's a very, that's the motion. I think that's a very reasonable ask. It needs to be a notice of motion. No, it doesn't. It's a rising business. I'm sorry? It's a rising business out of the report. A rising from the letter response? Yeah. Okay. It's on the floor. It's not a no it does not need to be a notice of motion. No, you don't. Out of the motion, she can actually do it. Is it right? No, it's arising out of this. She's pulling out the report so she can actually do it. She can? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then thank you for the motion. Could you uh, say it again? Okay. So be it resolved that the that one hundred percent of the elder schools the Peel District School Board schools and work sites recycle by the end of this current school year. Does and that make any sense? Questions? So, do you have a second? Yes. Trustee Sohi? Okay, can we, can we ask for two, uh, two thirds to vote on it today? Because I think that would satisfy everyone and it would just, isn't it arising that that's, we've done this before. It's okay? It's arising from the report. I think we're getting a, yes. Yeah. Can we have this motion today and vote on it right now? Yes, yes thank you. Yes, no, we do not. No. It's arising out of this. I have a question from Trustee Davies. Well, ask your questions now. I'm sorry? No, he said he asked questions. Trustee Davies? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I just need more information before I can vote on something like this. Um, with such a small amount not participating, there must be a valid reason. And, and I'd like to know those reasons before I vote on something like this. And I, I just... Can I introduce it before we have the debate? I'm sorry, Trustee Krub, I didn't hear you. Can I introduce the motion before... Because we had a bit of a conversation going back and forth right now about whether it can be a motion right now or not. The answer is that it can be a motion. Right. Right? Because it is a rising business. So can I please introduce the motion and then others can chime in and then debate, and then close it, and then you can vote. And then you can decide if you need more time or not. And my apologies, I thought you had introduced it. No, I was caught up with the whether I can or cannot. So if you want to push your button? Yeah, it's still pushed. Can I go ahead? OK, thank you. Um, I think it's important that all of our schools recycle, and I would like to remind um, my trusty colleagues, our young people right now are asking for action 
to protect our environment, to protect our planet from all levels of government. On Friday, this coming Friday, um, there's going to be a climate action um, where students are going to be leaving our schools to go outside and tell the whole world that this is the most important issue to them. I am sure there are reasons why 10 out of 267 schools have, not deci have decided not to participate in recycling yet. I don't know if there are that many good reasons. I think we have a responsibility to our students to show that we are listening. Um, we had this conversation, a similar conversation around uh, the use of uh, the single use of um, of, uh, of plastic, and that was successful. Um, we are giving plenty of time. I don't think it's it's too difficult to. And then the other thing to think about is that the, all of this already exists. If 257 schools are already doing something, then the parameters already exist within the board. The other ones just have to get on board and just essentially copy paste what they're doing. So, I leave it to the board to decide. I think this is really important. I think it's important that we show our students that we actually, um, we actually care about the things that they care about. Um, and I think this is a timely issue. Um, and I'm asking for a recorded vote. Thank you, Trustee Martin. Well, I thank you, uh, Trustee DeCrew, for bringing this forward. Um, your, your question was somewhat generic in terms of what people recycle, and I don't know that we've got enough information on us and the responses back to actually make an informed decision about who is and isn't recycling what uh, based upon 96% uh, uh, participation. That doesn't, and then we've got a couple that are interested in commencing a program. So there's a couple that aren't interested. Those that aren't interested, we don't have any reasons here. Uh, we may not own. I, it doesn't say what schools, what buildings, uh, what are the nature of the students, what are the nature of the people here. I just don't feel comfortable based upon this acting upon your motion tonight. Um, I, I'd be happy to go forward with the motion if we were given enough time and notice of motion to ask these questions and perhaps get some further reports and information from the board. Uh, if there is going to be a fiscal component to this, uh, is this more important than funding the soccer teams that were in front of us tonight? I don't know and I can't make that decision uh, based upon something here that we may be giving a direction to spend a million dollars on. Um, so, frankly, I can't support this motion in this form tonight. Uh, I think it'd be much more appropriate to have this motion put forward or delayed until we could have the actual information before the board to, to act and discuss on. With the proper information, we'll probably support it, you but at this it. point I can't. You can defer it. You can defer it now. You can put a motion on the defer. It's too late to stop talking. I haven't pushed my button, so if, if you can defer it or, or, de, or delay this vote, I would, uh, I would appreciate it and think it would be more appropriate for the board. You can do it. Oh, I would. In that case, I would put forward a, an addendum to... Save me. No. Defer it. To defer this motion... I just found a length of time. For, ...to the next meeting so that the board can prepare further information on the potential costs and ramifications to us as a board of voting on this motion. Okay, now we have a deferral to the motion, an, an amendment to the motion to defer. And do you have a second for uh, no. Trustee B. McDonald? A second. So, Trustee Marchant, you can speak to your deferral motion. Oh, I guess it's by put your mic on it, it'd be easier for you to speak. Although I, I really have nothing else to add other than what I said in the lead up to this. Thank you through you, Chair. Thank you. Do we have anyone else who chooses to speak about to the deferral? Trustee DeCrew? I really don't have a problem deferring this for two weeks for my colleagues to get more information. But I've got to say that um, from my perspective, as somebody who was born in the late 80s and somebody who grew up in the 90s and in the 2000s, this is pretty much common sense. So I don't know what much more information 
we would need 257 schools already recycled. 10 more just haven't gotten around to it. Thank you. So I don't know what more information you need, but that's fair. I understand that some people just process things Take a, they take a little bit more time and you want to you wanna get more information, and I get that, but I just, sometimes around the table we defer things and we refer things, and it's really not helpful or useful, but I'm just saying, our young people are asking for us, for on all, all levels of government, to be actually taking climate change seriously, and we've allowed, we've, we've put out information out there to say, you can leave school to go and participate, but we're not going to recycle because we need to find out more information. So this is what you're saying to them today. So I hope they're listening. I'm happy to support this today. I don't have a problem with it. I think it's very important, and I think it's worth the money even if it did cost something. But if you want to defer, go ahead. Thank you. Trustee Davies? I support uh, Trustee Marchand's uh, deferral. Um, I know in some of the northern regions there is, um, there might be a problem with getting pickup at the schools. I, I just have faith in our administration that there are valid reasons why these, uh, these 10 are not participating in a recycling program and I'd like to learn what those reasons are before I vote. That's all. Thank you. Do we have anyone else to speak to the motion on deferral? Trustee Sohi? No. Thank you, through you, Chair. Um, I think this is a time where we all are looking into how we can protect and protect our climate and climate change and all that is a hot topic. So I don't know, I don't think that the 10 schools will add a lot of cost to this, but I'm okay to defer it and bring it back in two weeks. Um, but really, this is a need of time. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? So, um, Trustee Ducru I'm sorry? Oh, sorry, Susan. Through you, Chair, thank Trustee you. Benjamin. I too support Trustee Marchand in what uh, uh, in this uh, move to defer the motion. Uh, I too would like to know what are the reasons why this, these schools are not part of this recycling program, and uh, for that reason, I need that information. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Trustee Marchand, do you want to close the debate? Yes, thank you. And, and again, I think as I made it clear to my trustee, DeCru, um, I, I do support certainly recycling in the climate. And, and I think it's very important for all of us to take action. And uh, as we know, so many politicians have been promising doing things quickly and rashly without costing them out, and then they never get done. Um, so if we could actually know the full impact of this to the board, so we can prob properly look forward. Uh, and see what's being done in those 257 schools that perhaps we can make sure that it's consistent across the board. Because I suspect we may have some of those 257 that are recycling paper but not toners, uh, plastic but not other things. So if we could look for some consistency across the board on that and perhaps some efficiencies in there as well uh, so that we can not only do what we're doing, you know, find our best practice amongst our schools uh, and giving our, our staff the ability to look into this. Um, uh, two weeks, I, I don't think is going to cause any huge ramifications to our long-term uh, impact uh, as a board and may give us time to make some much better decisions rather than jumping blindly in and perhaps make a much more uh, fulsome rather than just making a motion for the sake of making a motion that we're going to do something by the end of the year. Let's come up with some concrete steps. Uh, th this board did so last week by looking to get rid of all single-use plastics within a time frame and exploring that and moving forward with that. Um, so I would be happy to support this, as I said at the beginning, uh, just if I've got the information before me. We pay staff to be able to provide us with this information. I think it would be a folly not to take advantage of that staff and that expertise out there and do a bit of a best practice amongst our own board and perhaps find some further lessons learned we can move forward with. So 
respectfully, I do ask that this board defer this tonight to uh, the next me meeting for some further information. Thank you. Thank you. So we have uh, Trustee DeCrude ask for a recorded vote. So, but we are voting on the, uh, I'm sorry, on the motion. Okay, thank you. The right to do so. I'm sorry? I'm asking for a recorded vote on the deferral and the original motion. No? I've already called for the vote. But I can't ask for a recorded vote on the deferral right now. I can. No. Why not? Doesn't matter. Anybody can ask for a recorded vote. No, no you can't. On the deferral, you can't. Procedurally, you can't. Can't anyone I, ask for a recorded vote? You can, you can do it. I would like I'll to defer to, okay. to, the, to our board reporter. the motion can ask for a recorded vote. Yeah. Sorry, I only got part of that. Recorded vote on the deferral. All right then. We all want to be happy. So, um, I have I don't have the wording for the uh, deferral. Can you read it for us, please? Lola, can you push your button? So Thank everybody you. stands, and then as I read this, sit down. Huh? Yeah, if you could just read the motion for deferral. Board meeting. Until the next board meeting. Can you say it again now? Your mic's off. No, stop. No, it keeps. It keep, uh. Just hang on. Hang on. No. Okay. No. It's red. It's okay. okay. So, Trustee John Marchand has requested a deferral of the motion by Trustee Dakrub until the next board meeting. Thank you. So I'll call the vote. All those in favor of deferral? Trustee Marchand, Trustee B. McDonald, <coughs> Trustee Lawton, Trustee Davies, you miss Sophie. Trustee Sohi, Trustee Sohi, Trustee Davies, Trustee Andrews, Trustee Benjamin, and all those in not in favor of the deferral. Mm. Trustee Dakrub, Trustee K. McDonald, Trustee Crocker. Um, student trustees, are you in favor or are you abstaining or abstaining? So seven in favor, three not in favor and two abstained. So the deferral carries. No, it's Trustee Dean. Three. Okay. 
Trustee Green is abstaining Trustee as well. Green. So three not in favour, four not in favour, and two abstain. Oh. So seven in favour, three not in favour, and th one abstain and two non-binding abstain. So three totally abstain. Thank so you the very much. Deferral carries. So the deferral passes. Thank you. We go to 14.3, response to a written question submitted by Trustee Kay McDonald at the September 9th, 2019 board meeting regarding human rights cases. Trustee McDonald, would you like to put that on the floor? And Trustee Crocker, would you like to second it? Thank you. Any questions or comments? Trustee Kay McDonald. So I'd just like to say thank you to the director and the associate director for this. Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. And 14.4, response to a written question submitted by Trustee Kay McDonald at the September 9th, 2019 board meeting regarding the number of whistleblower cases. Uh, Trustee McDonald, would you like to put that on the floor? Yep. Yeah. And Trustee Andrews, would you like to second it? Sure. Thank you. Questions or comments? Trustee McDonald. Again, I'd like to thank the director for this report. Thank you. Thank you. So all those in favor? Thank you. And item 15, uh, reports from trustee representatives on councils or associations. Seeing none, item 16, comments or questions from board members. Trustee Noe? Trustee Roe? <laughs> Thank you, um, through you the chair. I would just like to um, mention a few things. So I recently had the opportunity to meet with one of the teachers at Applewood Secondary School who organized a um, social entrepreneurship and um, self-employment program for the students um, with disabilities. And I would just like to take a moment to commend her and all of those who are involved with this program um, and who initiated this because it is so important for us to really present these students with opportunities. And I'm so, I'm so happy to be part of a board that actually helps these students um, be empowered and unlock doors for them. I would also like to take a moment to thank um, Trustee Crocker and um, the rest of the board members for um, recognizing the importance of working towards single-use plastic, zero single-use plastic. The step that we have taken as a society um, to hope to instill um, values within our future leaders is really pivotal. And I feel so fortunate to represent a board that has such collectivistic ideologies. I hope that we've set an example for the other districts and the other boards and they follow along with our pathways. Um, and on behalf of the students, I would like to thank you all for taking our futures into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. We all like to hear you speak, both student trustees. Thank you. Trustee Crocker. Uh, thank you, Chair, and through you. Um, I, I would like to thank and acknowledge uh, my trustee colleagues and um, a large number of, of other people's support for that motion uh, at the last meeting came from all over the place, uh, particularly from the schools. I, I, I did do some homework. I did talk to people in the schools. and, and uh, I got nothing but joy. I, I didn't get um, an, anybody who said to me, but what about, or, or you know, really? Uh, I mean, there are, there are questions, but, uh, but everybody seems to be in favor of it and, um, and, and says that it's something we, uh, we, we might have done a long time ago. Um, I also had support and encouragement from the uh, former chair of the board, who I, I think wishes she could have been here to, uh, to put her hand up as well. Uh, it, it calls to mind, and I, and I know that Trustee DeCrew mentioned this, um, and I think we've probably all now uh, seen notice of this, uh, the, um, the global climate strike on, on Friday. I know the word strike um, strikes fear into uh, people in management circles, but it, it doesn't need to. 
Uh, there's the strikes, and then there's and then there's strikes. Um, one of the uh, worries that I had about this was it would be really hard for me to get downtown to Queen's Park, and uh, I, I know what it's like. I've been to a lot of events at Queen's Park when there's a whole lot of people there, and uh, the older I get, the more difficult that is, particularly when we're hauling uh, grandchildren around, uh, one of whom will be, will be truant <coughs> on, uh, on, on Friday. Uh, but the, the good news is, is that something's ap actually happening in Mississauga, and I don't know whether everybody knows this or not, but you don't have to get on the subway and go to Queen's Park on, uh, on Friday. You can go to Celebration Square. And uh, the, the event, the global climate strike, uh, is time for 12.30, which uh, seems pretty good. I think you might even be able to get busing to something like that. Um, and, and so my my question then is for senior admin, and I, I did uh, make reference uh, uh, to this in a discussion with uh, Associate Director Harmon earlier today. Uh, what support will there be uh, from the Peel District School Board for individual students, teachers, uh, classes, uh, schools wishing to participate in the global climate strike on uh, Friday, September 27th? Okay, so through Associate you, Director Hunt. Uh, through you, Chair Lawton, my apologies, I, I thought you had said that. Um, so we have um, sent out instructions to all of our schools. We're working on this in a couple of levels. Um, email has gone out to all schools advising them that should they wish to participate in climate strike activities at their site, um, they are, are, are encouraged to do so with teacher supervision. Um, that would look something similar to Earth Day, etc. Um, it is something that could be done on site, particularly with elementary schools. Um, that is something that we are, are supporting going forward. And I believe some resources have also been sent out from our curriculum department um, to support some of those activities. Um, for students who wish to participate in the actual climate strike, we have um, made some allowances for courses where this aligns with curriculum for teachers to make arrangements to go. Um, I believe some schools have taken advantage of that. As far as additional students who wish to participate in the climate strike, we have posted um, some of our student walkout materials. We do have a protocol for that that is in place. Um, and certainly there's a number of steps that have been and will be communicated to those schools that are um, expressing a large number of students interested in the climate strike going forward. So those supports are in place. Um, unfortunately, it is a school day. Um, we do have courses running. Um, supervision for some events does become a little bit of a concern. Um, were a large number of students to leave and or staff. But again, I believe the plan we have done has, um, has come up with a balance of, of supporting the spirit of this event with the understanding that, of course, we are a, a public education institution and it is a regular school day for us. So again, we do have um, the encouragement for organized activities. We do have curriculum sending out resources to support schools. And certainly allowances have been made um, for those students who wish to participate in the strike to, to exit the building. And, and we do have measures in place that schools are aware of um, that will allow that to happen in a safe and orderly fashion. Uh, thank you, Chair Supplemental. Uh, so, uh, uh, thank you for that very politic answer, sir. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I would just like, and you may have said this, but I, um, I, I might not have heard it. Uh, just, just to reaffirm that uh, a student who chooses to participate in this uh, won't be punished. They won't get zero on a quiz or, um, or, or anything like that. And our employees won't be punished, if, provided they follow the protocol and, uh, and, and made sure that their classes are covered and all that sort of thing. Uh, through you, Chair Lawton. Yes, that is in fact correct. There will be um, um, no consequences for students. Um, and again, teachers who are able to arrange um, following our normal processes, time to attend, um, provided obviously their duties at the school are covered, um, there will be no, um, no, no sort of repercussions whatsoever for those. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Through you, Chair, I would like to express my deepest condolences to the family of Jonathan Davis, a grade 11 student of Lincoln Alexander Secondary School, who lost his life due to a senseless act of violence on Sunday, 15 September. I visited the school on Monday, 16th. Everything was under control in the school. The Associate Director, Mark Harmon, two superintendents, Patricia Dawes and Harjeet Aujla, 
two other principals whose names I do not have now, and the CIRT team were all pre uh, present to provide support to the students and staff of the school. The communications team was also present, and on the whole, the situation was handled very efficiently. The principal and the vice principal and other staff members of the school also provided support to the entire school. On Friday, 20th September, the Malton community united as one to hold a candlelight vigil for this student. It was attended by all the levels of government and some of the teachers who had taught Jonathan in the lower grades. They were also present there. On behalf of the P PDSB, I extended our support and condolences to the family of Jonathan at this time of great pain. I have nothing further to say. It was a very emotional moment, and I was really very, very impressed by the well-organized event. Almost every community in Malton united together and provided support to the whole community. That's it. Thank you, Trustee Benjamin. Uh, Trustee Kim McDonald, anything? Trustee Andrews? Trustee Davis? No. Trustee DeCrew? Trustee Merchant? Trustee B. McDonald? Trustee Sophie? Trustee Green? Thank you. And we go into item 17, public question period. Do we have any questions from the public? Sorry. Please come down. Thanks, Ron. Welcome, mm. sir. If you could just give us our, give us your name. Kumar. Kumar. Thank you. I'm sorry, my vocal cords are messed up, but I'll still ask my question. During the meeting of August 27th, the board meeting, Trustee Cathy McDonald brought forward concerns regarding systemic discrimination and the chair got very upset. What is the board doing about it regarding her concerns other than she being yelled at? Second thing, this is my question. Second thing is, I think Trustee Marchant did not hear properly because there was no mention of soccer. People sitting here were talking about field hockey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't hear the question. The question was, what is the board doing about Trustee McDonald's concerns. That was the question that came from the public. And the concerns that Superintendent DeSilva, will you? You provide the question later? Thank you for that. And we'll respond to the question at that time. Hello. Hello, welcome. Can you give us your name? Sure. My name is Ms. Hilton, and my question is. And I'm sorry that the chair isn't here tonight because my question is directly to the chair. And my question is this. Uh, when is the school board trustee chair going to make a public apology for the accusatory tone and attack 
that he did towards another trustee. And this trustee is also a female minority. And this was done on August 27th, and it is public record, available for members of the public, like myself, to listen to. You can hear the anger and the accusations of Miss McDonald being accused of being yelled at when in fact it was the trustee that was raising his voice. She was very calm and if you play back the recordings from one hour and 37 minutes, you can hear everything. So I think it's very, excuse my language, disgusting as a chair to be yelling at other chair members, trustee members, representing Peel Board. I do not think this is a good look or image for members, for public members to uh, represent. That's what my question is. So when are we going to see or hear an apology from the chair? As you said, there's... Thank you. Uh, as you said, the chair is not here this evening. We will make sure that the question is passed on. Do we have any other questions or comments? Any other questions from? No, seeing none. Uh, item 18, further business. Seeing any further business? Thank you. Item 19, adoption of the in-committee reports. Trustee Davies, seconded by Trustee Marchant. Please, thank you. And item 20, adjournment. Trustee Green and Trustee Sohi, second it. Thank you very much. And that's it, folks. Thank you very much. <laughs>